Hi there! Today we're going to talk about these subtitles, and more specifically my favorite method to quickly produce and customize these subtitles that are great for social media clips. Let's get started. Now it is important to clarify some things right off the bat. What I am talking about is text that actually appears on screen during the video. A lot of times you will see this on social media while the video is auto playing, the captions or subtitles already come up and you can see them, they're big, they're bold. But what we're not talking about are traditional captions or subtitles, closed captioning that you can toggle on or off, which are normally embedded into the video and then can be turned on in various viewers. Resolve does have functionality for that. If you right click on any video track and go to add subtitle track, you will get some custom controls in the inspector when you click create caption. This is very powerful and super useful to a lot of users, but it's not what we're going to be talking about today. Today we're going to make big, bold subtitles that you intentionally place on top of the video so they are always there, always visible. I'm going to demonstrate with this clip that I just recorded and that you've just seen. And the first step is to make sure our effects library is open and we're going to come down to titles, text plus, and drag that right over our footage. And quick side note, you will see here text and text plus. Text plus brings in the full power of the text plus node in the fusion page to the edit page. So you have a lot more power and flexibility and that's what we're gonna be using today. Now, if you're just getting started, here's what you might do. You might start customizing and you know you'll say different things at different times. So you might drag in something for this and then drag in another clip another text plus for your next sentence. And then if you want to do any customization, if you want to change this to bold or change the color or the size or the positioning or anything, you would then need to either copy these attributes or customize this again from scratch. But what we're going to do is save you a lot of time there. I'm going to delete the second text plus. I'm going to drag this first text plus out for the entire duration. And first, what I'm going to do is focus on the formatting or what I want these to actually look like in frame. So I'm going to make sure I have a nice font I like. I'm actually going to go to a uh, bold italic. I think italic fonts, especially chunky bolder italic fonts, look pretty good for these subtitles. And then we're actually going to leverage the power of this text plus node by coming over here to the shading tab. These shading trolls are very powerful. They allow you to essentially create duplicates of your text and affect them in different layers while they all perfectly stack on top of each other. So check this out. Element one is always your main text. But if I go to element two and enable that, you'll see by default, it is this really thin red outline. But what we're gonna do is go pull up this thickness, change this from a red to a black. I'm going to do that really quickly by just pulling down this slider. And then I'm going to come down to softness and pull this up on both the X and Y. So there you'll see we get a really soft black outline. This is really helpful, especially if you're putting these over brighter clips. This is a little dark clip to begin with. Um, but especially if you're working over brighter footage, this will really help you out. And then we can move on to the real power of how to work with this quickly. I'm gonna go to my text plus back to my first text setting here in the inspector. And because I'm not talking right at the beginning, I'm actually going to blank this out and I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm gonna set a keyframe by clicking this little triangle over here. Now, interesting things happen when we keyframe this styled text parameter. If you've used keyframings before, that normally if you have a value, a slider controlling anything in your scene, and you keyframe it at zero, then you go 10 seconds in and keyframe it at one, then over the course of those 10 seconds, that slider will interpolate, it's called, between zero and one, and it will smoothly slide. But here we're using a text, which doesn't have values in between different text. So the way these will work are similar to what is called a hold keyframes in After Effects. When it gets to a keyframe, it'll hold that value until it reaches the next keyframe, and then it'll just jump to that next value. And this is going to be perfect for us. Let me show you. So right now I have a keyframe with just nothing in this styled text parameter, but I'm going to go to when I first say my little hi there. Hi there. To and then right when that hits, I'm going to select this text parameter and I'm just going to type in this box. Hi there. And if I click off, you'll see that it will have automatically added a keyframe for us there. And then when we play this back, hi there, you'll see that our text pops up on screen right when we say it. 
And from here on, you can just watch through your video and type up whatever you're saying as you go. And I recommend writing these as you watch through the video because that will help you avoid some common problems like having too much text on a screen at a time. So I'm going to use this method, watching through, listening to what I say, backing up to right before I say that, and then typing that into the text, which will automatically set a keyframe so it switches to that text right before I say those words. And now once I'm through this all, I'm gonna wait for this caching bar above our effect to go from red to blue so that we have smooth playback. If you don't have this, there's a few things you can check. You can select your text plus layer, go up to playback, and then you wanna check render cache. You'll want this to either be on smart or user. I believe by default it should be on smart, but you can always force it to user if you know you wanna get rendering. Hi there. Today we're going to talk about these subtitles and more specifically my favorite method to quickly produce and customize these subtitles that are great for social media clips. Let's get started. I really like how these are looking and there's still a whole lot of power here because this is all this one text layer. If I wanted to go back and change anything about these subtitles, the, the font, the color, the size, even that background second layer would all be dynamic. It would instantly apply to all of these different subtitles. I even touched on changing the settings a bit. Here when I jump to two lines, I had to pull down this line spacing a little bit because by default it was just a little too wide. But there is one other thing I want to touch on that you might run into. If you go through this process, set all your keyframes for your text, but then you realize that the timing is a little bit off on one or multiple of these keyframes, here's what you'll have to do. We set these keyframes here on the edit page, but on the edit page, there's nowhere you can go to see these because this is a fusion effect that we are just accessing on the edit page. So say for example, this first hi there message, it pops in here, but say we wanted it to appear just a few frames earlier. Here's what you would have to do. I'm going to set my playhead to where I want the text to actually pop up. And then with that text plus selected, in the inspector, I'm going to click this button to open the effect in the fusion page. And if you've never used the fusion page, this will absolutely be a little intimidating. Here's what you need to know. The way that the fusion page works is based off nodes. So here we have a template node that is this text plus effect going into the media out. This will be in every fusion composition, whatever you do on the fusion composition will go into a media out and that will send it back to the edit page. And here in the inspector, if you don't have the inspector open, you can toggle it on here. You'll see all these same controls that we had on the edit page. And in this middle section here, you'll see that there are these little white markers and those are actually an indicator of where we have keyframes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this first template node and I'm gonna come up here to spline. I'm gonna click that and then I'm actually gonna close my inspector so I have a little more room. And to demonstrate, in this spline viewer, I'm gonna come up here to this icon for zoom to fit. I'm gonna click that. And here you'll see a visual representation of all the keyframes you set on this styled text parameter. Because these are functioning as hold keyframes, the shape doesn't matter as much, but you can see that over time, it just goes from one keyframe to another. And I can hold my middle mouse button to uh, drag this around and scroll on my middle mouse button while holding control to zoom into where my playhead is. And I'm gonna zoom in right to where this representation passes my playhead. And you'll see that close to that, we have this little lock icon and that represents that closest first keyframe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag a box around the keyframe and mouse over it until it goes yellow and my icon changes a little bit. And I'm going to drag that so it perfectly intersects with my playhead and instantly you'll see the text appear. And if I go back to the edit page, you'll see that now that text appears where I wanted it a little bit earlier in the frame. Now, ideally, you would nail all of your timing the first time you go through your text, but if you don't, you will need to go into the Fusion text using this method. But that is what I recommend for this sort of brand of social media subtitles. It gives you a lot of flexibility, and once you get the method down, it's pretty quick to soar through projects. I really think this method shines in vertical format, something like for YouTube Shorts or TikTok, especially when you take into account all the ways you can customize it and make it interesting. You could even add some funky things like shake or wave over it. It's really powerful, but you do first have to get your actual text in it, and using keyframes is a phenomenal way to do that. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more tips like this for Resolve, consider subscribing. We have so much more coming, some big news coming soon I'm very excited about. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.